Good afternoon everybody. This is Kidar from Intensis. Uh, welcome to this webinar for structure design by using Katia V5. If you have any question regarding the webinar, please put that particular question in a chat so that uh, we can answer it uh, if possible today uh, during the session or if not then I'll answer them separately. Can everybody see the screen? Okay. I assume everybody is able to see my screen. So uh, if if anybody doesn't, uh, just ping me in the chat, and I'll help you to get uh, get the screen visualized. Okay. Uh, welcome to this intrinsic webinar. Uh, before we start discussing about the structure design in Katia. Let me give you a brief introduction about the Entrances. Entrances is a Milton Keynes based engineering company which is being founded in 1998 and we are the biggest value added reseller of the diesel system uh, in UK and the second one in North Europe. We have a pool of 64 consultants uh, which directly deals with the Dassault system softwares which has a turnover of 12 million and we do offer engineering services as well in aer aerospace and automobile companies. Uh, we have a resource pool of 85 design engineers and we are having turnover around 20 million. We have four offices in UK and one office in South Africa. If you have any interest in training or consultancy you can contact us through our website or you can always welcome to be at our office in Milton Keynes or in Castle Donington. In terms of a software uh, or the the value addition that we provide value addition we provide for the result system software we, we deal with the 3D experience, Katia, Inovia, Delmia, Similia, Xlead, Transcat, Transys, all these software which are developed and maintained by the Resolve system. We not only provide the training but we offer services related with the project management, improvement, overhauling the entire system. Plus we work with directly with the Resolve system developers so that any improvement in the tool need to be done. We help them as well. In terms of the consultancy, as you can see, we offer services in project management, software development as well. We have a, a vast pool of support engineers who runs the help desk and we offer number, numerous services related with the trainings uh, in UK on site or you can, uh, you can come down to our office or we can visit your office for the training as well. So this is something, a brief introduction about the entrances. I'll uh, take you to back to the Katia V4 where we'll be discussing the various options available for the structures design. Now the structure design is being divided into two basic parts. It's the conventional structure part, that's something you can use it for the ordinary structure design or there is a, some specific tools available for us for designing the structures for the shipbuilding. So if I go in the start mechanical design and you will find there is option of a structure design. Or if I go in start equipment and system you will find in a structure discipline you have a structural functional design, structural object design and compartment and access. Now all these three workbenches that you are about to see in the equipment and system are more of the related with the shipbuilding functionality. While the conventional structural design you will able to see in the mechanical design and in a structure design. 
Today, as a part of this webinar, we will be discussing only the conventional structure design, while there will be one more additional webinar following to this one, where we will be discussing the structure design by using the structure functional design or object design also. Now, in terms of the functionality or the number of tools available in both these options are almost same. The flexibility of the functionalities in case of a your ship building solution is much more than the conventional structure design. So you will find the number of tools that are available in the conventional structure design are more expanded in this particular functionality. Okay, so for today, we are just going to concentrate on the conventional structure design. So for that, what you need to do is so as to access this particular workbench, if you go in the mechanical design, and we need to select the structure design workbench. Now, the structure design workbench is, you can see on the screen, it is a assembly base or the product base. That means all the part or the all the structure entities that we will be developing will be attached to this particular assembly as a, its single subordinate units. So if I need to make a changes in individual part and the system will allow me to do that, I will be able to open them or I will be able to create the different views of individual entity when I create the structural geometry in this particular assembly workbench. If you have any existing part or any existing geometry that need to be assembled in the structural design, the system will allow you to do that because of this particular functionality. It remains the same way in case of a conventional or the shipbuilding structure design as well. Okay. Now, first thing of the structure design is always going to begin with the creation of a wireframe for the structures. Now, for that, you will find Either we can make use of generative structural design or generative shape design workbench for the creation of the sorry, for the creation of the wireframe or you will find on the right hand side of your screen there is an option of a grid which will allow us to actually create the structure uh, grid required for the structure design. So for that, what you can you can see over here, you can define the location of the grid where it need to be created. You have can create your own origin for that. You can specify in the form of coordinate. You can specify what should be what should be the minimum length of the uh, individual element on that particular grid. How many grid elements you would like to create? So I would like to create a grid element along x direction to one mil. 1000 millimeter apart from each other and I would like to create two units. Similarly, I would like to do the same thing for Y axis and Z axis as well. And now if I hit OK, can you see that based on the parameters, the system has created a conventional of cubical grid on a screen. Okay, the plane that we are able to see it on the screen are going to represent the number of units that we have created. If you remember, we specified there are two units along x direction, two units along y direction, and two units along the z direction. That's why you will find along from at a distance of 1000 millimeters from your xy plane, you can see that the system has created two planes parallel to it at a thousand millimeters apart from each other. Once the system create all these planes, you will find the system will create the cubical entities, single individual entities as well. Now all these entities are registered on your specification tree. If I expand them, can you see that this is in the open body. All these planes that we have created has been registered plus all the single wireframe that is being created that we are able to see it on screen that we is being registered on your specification tree. The system will allow us to make a changes in these planes so that we can make all these geometries as in line with the actual space available for the structure design. Once we create this, you will find all these entities, depending on the number of units that we have specified, can you see that though it looks like a single unit, but they are being divided depending on the number of units that are being specified. 
it is going to make a lot of difference when we are going to create a structure design. Now the first option we are going to see over here for designing the structures is going to be, is suppose if I would like to create any structure member on this particular geometry. So for that you will find on the right hand side of your screen there is a toolbar called physical plate and shapes. Now if you see the third option that we have is a shape. Okay, which will allow us to create our structure members on this particular wireframe. So if I go in the shape option, okay, can you see that the system will ask me what geometry need to be created and it will give you an option of type. Now this option of type is going to define the inputs that we are going to provide for the, for the creation of the structure member. Now if I select the option support, you can see the select support option then we need to specify the wireframe along which we would like to have a structure member okay but before we define the location of that particular structure member the first thing that we need to do is we need to define the type of structure member we are going to create whether we would like to have a C section whether we would like to have a T section or it need to be a pipe all that that's something we have to define. Uh, for that, we need to go in a material and orientation tab. If I click on that, you will find the system will allow me to select the still. The system will allow me to select its weight and then system will allow me to select in the section. Again, the orientation of that geometry can be defined by this orientation tab. Okay, now over here you can see there are drop down box and if I click on the more option, can you see that the system will list out the different sections that are available for the selection. Now this list of the section that we are able to see it on a screen is basically comes with the standard Katia installation. Now if I would like to make a changes in this list, the system will allow me to do that. When we will be discussing the project management webinar, uh, project management tools in webinar, you, we will be discussing how to create these standards in Katia so that we can extend the list of the standards that are available uh, with the by default code. Okay, so from this list we need to select the standard that we will be using it. Once you select that, then we need to go in the geometry tab and then you need to select, as we can see, we have selected this option of select support. Suppose if I select this particular wireframe and if I click on it, can you see that the system has created a T section along the wireframe that we have selected. Now over here, you will find the system has started to show me two arrows. Basically one is upward direction, one is upper, uh, in a downward direction. By dragging these arrows, the system will allow me to change the orientation of this section as per the requirement I can I just need to click on it once I'm happy with that orientation what I need to do is just hit OK and you will find the system will create that particular section along the wireframe that we have selected now the length of this particular wireframe uh, the length of this particular structure member is going to be defined by this wireframe that we have selected okay so if I'm if I'm precise or if I'm uh, if I know the exact length of the wire exact length uh, length of the structure member, what we we can do is we can create its wireframe and then ask the system to actually follow that particular wireframe for the designing the structure member. But instead of that, if we just know the starting point of the structure member and the end point of the structure member and we don't know the path in between them if I would like to have a straight line to be followed, a straight line structure member to be followed in between them we cannot use this particular functionality so for that what we need to do is whenever we would like to define the structure member in terms of its starting point and finishing point we need to go again in this shape option and then instead of select support can you see that there is option called point to point if I click on this point to point option, can you see that the system will ask me the location of the starting point of that particular structure member. Now either I can specify its coordinate in terms of the x, y, z, that's the one way to do it. Or what I can do is I can click at the starting point and then 
can you see that the system has started to show me on the screen a green line which represents the structure member length. Once I select in starting point and then if I click on the end point and if I hit OK, can you see that the system will create a second structure member along the length, along the two point that we have selected. Okay, now if you see on the screen, there are a number of wireframes that are being created on this particular geometry. Okay, so if I go in this shape option and if I select support option, if I select structure number number one, can you see that the system has created only the structure member along the wireframe that we have selected. But if you go in a support option and if you just select the option of multi selection window, can you see that the system will allow us to select multiple wireframes for the creation of the structure member. And now if I hit OK, can you see that the system has created two structure members along the two wireframes. Though if you look at this particular geometry, though this particular section is going to work as a single unit, but now what I'm able to see them as a two different unit. So if I would like to have these two structure members to be merged together, what we need to do is we need to merge them together. So as a part of this webinar also, we will be discussing how to merge these two geometries together. Okay, so if I go in the merge, which is the physical and plate option, if you see the second option, can you see that there is a merge option? Right now you can see on the screen there are two structure members. They have been differentiated at this point. I can see the line. But now if I go in a merge option, select the structure number one, select the structure item number two. And now if I hit OK, can you see that the system will convert that particular stru two structure members to form a single unit. Only thing that we have to keep in mind when we will be using this particular functionality is these two geometry, these two sections has to be of a same specification and same type. If you have one as a T section and the second one is five, you won't be able to convert them to form a single unit. So that's something we need to be careful when we are going to have two geometries to be merged together. Okay, now when I select this particular structure member, suppose I created the T section, but I would like to convert that particular T section into some different form of sections. And that's something being told to me by the, uh, the finite element analysis team. So in that case, what we need to do is we need to select that particular structure, right click structure member, right select it. Then if you right click it on the shape and object, can you see that over here, there is an option of definition. If I click on this definition option, can you see that the system will pop up the same shape definition window on your screen. And now you, the system will allow you to modify the size of the the size of the section member and the system will allow you to actually change the type of the section as well. So instead of T section, suppose if I would like to have a C section, select that. Can you see that instead of T, the system has created a C section. Again, the system will allow me to make a modifications in that section depending on the requirement. Like this hit OK and this is the section is being changed. So you don't need to delete the entire geometry for the creation of a section. What you just need to do is basically just right click it and go in a definition tab and the system will allow you to modify this particular section member. Okay, now when I create a structure member by using the conventional method of using the selecting the wireframe, what happens? The starting point and the end point of this particular section get linked or get connected to the starting point and end point of that particular wireframe. And that's why if I select that this particular structure member, if I right click it and if I go in shape dot object, can you see that over here there's an option called stretch. If I click on that, you will find the starting point and the end point of that particular section member, can you see that the system has locked it? And that's why the system will not allow you to make a modifications in this particular structure member. Okay, so if I would like to make a changes in the structure member length, only the, op I can do that only when 
that particular sex, uh, structure member is being created by making use of a point to point op uh, option. So if I select the second structure member where we have created the structure member by selecting the starting point and end point of the geometry what you need to and if I would like to stretch it or if I would like to make a changes in its length select that right click it if I go in a shape dot object you can see there is option called stretch click on that can you see that over here the system has started to show me the two arrows the uh, the arrows representing the direction in which I would like uh, where in which I can stretch them up so if I select it along its length and if I click on it and can you see that the system will allow me to drag that particular structure member and now if I hit OK can you see that the length change in length of this particular structure member okay now interesting thing one thing I would like to show it to you about this structure members that we have created that is these structure members are nothing but is the if you remember there was a rip command in case of a KTF part design in the background the system just use these macros to create this rip command whenever we provide this uh, whenever we use any of the command for the structure design that's why if I expand the specification tree of this individual shape can you see that in a part body I'm able to see the structure rip and if I double click on that you will find the system will give me various options or various forms that I have used it for the creation of that particular geometry. The system will allow us to modify that one but it is recommended not to make use of this particular functionality for addition because all the structure members that we are going to create over here are going to be used from the standards and if there is a modification that you will do it at this end will be contradictory to the uh, to the standards that we have used and might send a wrong information uh, to the various people within the organization okay so like that we can create the sections uh, structure members in the structure design workbench now the next phase is going to be to create a support plate now if I would like to create a support plate again there are two options for creation of the plates the first option is conventionally is defining the limits of the plate and the system will just fill the gap with the material in it for that what you need to do again if I go in the physical plate and shape option you will find there is an option called plate click on that now again over here first thing that we need to define is the type of plate what the material that we will be using it for the definition of the plate so if I go in the material and orientation we will be having a steel material the grade of that we can specify and what should be the thickness of it once we define that if I go in a geometry tab you will find there is option type if I select support and contour the system will allow me to select the plane along which that particular plate should lie and the second one is the system will allow me to define the boundaries of this plate in terms of the sketch so for that what I need to do is select a plane on which that particular plate should lie then if I go in the contour option can you see that there is option of sketch if I click on it can you see that the system will create a, a sketch on the plane that we have selected and the system will divert me to the sketch, uh, sketch, sketch of workbench now over here either by making use of a conventional drawing tools I uh, have to create the boundaries for the plate or I can make use of this wireframe for the definition of its definition so if I create, a, define the boundaries of the plate like this, a square one. And now if I come out of the sketch, can you see that the system has created the plate of the thickness that we have specified following the sketch that we have defined in the sketch. Okay, now this when the system is going to provide the thickness to this plate, you will find on that particular plane there is a arrow that represent the thickness in, uh, in the direction in which the thickness is being provided if I would like to provide the thickness in the same di uh, in a in the same quantity in a, both the direction what I need to do can you see that over here there is option of center line again if I hit OK you will find the system will create a plate in the space 
Now over here you will find there is one plate that we have created and there is one structure member and this structure member actually exactly passes through the plate. Now we need to create an opening to this particular plate so that we can have this particular structure member to pass through it and we can provide if required the building operation at that location. For that you will find again in the physical plate and shape definition you will find there is an option of cutout or there is an option of standard slot. We can use any of these options for the creation of this cutout. So if I select standard slot, okay, so first thing what I need to do, select the member on which we would need to create the slot. Select that. Now over here, slot, can you see that there is an option of add. Then we need to select the stru structure member that through which it passes. Then over here, we can define the system just to follow the profile of the geometry or what we can do is we can provide the, some clearance to this particular geometry as well. And for that, you will find on the there is option of define slot type. Now, if I click on this catalog browser, can you see that the system will give me various types of slot that can be created depending on the parameters that we have entered and depending on the geometries that we have selected. So if I select, I would like to have a T-slot through the plate, click on it, you will find the system will, I will able to see the profile that the system is going to use it to create the slot in that particular plate. I'll be able to see all the different parameters of that. Once I'm happy with that, just double click on it, hit OK. Now, if I hit OK, can you see that a separate parameter tab has started to appear on the geometry. If I go in a parameter tab, I can define the clearances in between them and now if I hit OK, hit OK, can you see that the system will create an opening on that particular support plate through which that particular structure member can pass. Okay, so like that we will be able to, the system will allow us to create the plate, the system will allow us to create the opening in between the geometries. Now. The next option that we will be discussing, we will be discussing, suppose if I would like to create a bracket, how to create the bracket, that's something we'll discuss. For that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create two structure members. Select that. And I'll make use of T section. That's the section number one. And then I'll create second section which is this one it's okay now suppose there are two sections that are intersecting with each other now if i would like to have them a connecting joint or if i would like to have a merge them together what you can do is you will find physical plate there is option of cut back click on this if i would like to have a miller cut in between them what you need to do select these two structure members and now if I hit apply, can you see that the system will create a Miller cut in between the geometries where the cut can be introduced and where the building can take place to form a single bracket. Okay, so we can create, we, we can create a connection between the two geometries or two structure members depending on how they are going to be manufactured or how they are going to be built together. Okay. Now suppose if I would like to create a bracket in between the geometries, for that you will find there are number of tools available. One of the tools that is available is the small assemblies. If I click on that, okay, the system will allow me to provide the different basically the structure members which will allow which will in, uh, provide some extra stiffness to the geometry. For that what you need to do is I selected them hit OK. Now we need to select shape number one and if I select shape number two, okay, and if I hit OK, can you see that the system will create a you know, bracket in between the two geometries, uh, two structure members that we have selected. Okay, now one more thing I would like to show it to you and that is to be related with the 
plate and the structure member. For that, again, I will create, I'll just delete some of the geometries that we have created recently. Or I'll keep them as it is, just create a new one. So if I go in a structure design, I'll use the okay. I'll create one structure member. Point to point, starting point to end point. That's the one. And then I'll create a a plate. For that, select this plane, go in the sketcher, and then I'm going to create a Again, you can see over here, the plate is intersecting with the stru sub structure member. I would like to create an exact slot of this particular, exact slot of this structure member, which passes through this plate. For that, what we have to do is you will find on the right hand side, there is a miscellaneous toolbar and in that you will find this option on coping plate and shapes select that operated element is the plate on which that particular geometry need to be uh, on which the slot need to be created limiting element is the substructure uh, structure member that through which it passes once i select that then you need to select the intersection in between them if i right click it you can see that there is an option called coping strategy and if i select we want that particular structure member, whatever the shape or whatever the intersection in between these two geometries is, we would like to remove them. So if I click on the remove option and now if I hit OK, externally you won't find any change on the appearance of this particular, of this particular support plate. But then if I select this support plate, if I right click it and if I open this particular support plate in a separate window, you will find is system will create an exact slot of that particular structure member that passes through the geometry okay so like that we can depending on the requirement suppose if that particular support plate is going to be laser printed you don't need to create a separate design for that you can directly use this 3d models which we can import it in the laser machine for the further cut cutting processes okay now once we create all these structure members, the next phase of that is going to be create a bill of material or creating the different report relate which will allow us to actually procure this particular geometry. For that, what we need to do is there are a couple of ways by which we can create a bill of material for that particular geometry. So if you go in the tools, can you see that there is an option of report? If I go in a define, you need to define the reports basically instead of giving you the predefined report what you can do is you can create your own report so what i'm going to do i'll say test okay then we need to select the type of workbench on which we are working on so we are working on the structure design so if i go in the structure one then the top document then we need to define the type of geometry that we we would like to add so if i say is structure plate shape we would like to know support member and then we would like to first thing we need to know is the name of that particular member click add then in the second column we would like to know the material from which it is made up of so click on the material add then we need to select uh, maybe the definition add so depending on the requirement what we can do is we can define the type of uh, the, the the entities that we would like to know about any particular part add them once i add them you just need to save this particular part as bomb I'll just say save, close, and then we would like to run this report. So for that, what you need to do, tools. Again, if you go in a report, you will find there is option of generate. Click on that. By using this 
file selection window select the type of select the report that we have created in the XML format you need to have all objects in document need to be checked in so that the system will consider all the geometries so if I hit open can you see that the system will list out all the material or all the parts in that particular structure member okay all its material where the material is not being mentioned can you see that the system has started to show me the asterisk symbol indicating that definition is not being maintained but if you want to def maintain that what you can do is just close if I select that part right click it go in a properties option and over here the system will allow you to maintain all these parameters that are appearing on your bill of material report okay this is the one thing that we would like to know the second phase is if I would like to create a different views of this particular geometry or in a drafting workbench for that what we need to do is again you need to create convention you need to make use of a drafting workbench just like what we do it for any part design workbench or the part design part, uh, the part that is being designed by using the part design workbench what for that what we do is if I go to start fire up the drafting workbench once I do that if I would like to get a front view of this particular geometry go in a front view come back in a in the required workbench then you need to select the front view option and then you need to arrange the view as per the requirement and if I hit OK you will find the system will start showing me the front view of that geometry but one thing that you will find is if I start doing start using this particular conventional method of creating the draft uh, 2D views of the entire drafting width it will first of all it will take long time to open this particular document because the number of structure members are going to be very high okay then the graphical representation of this particular geometry for each and every geometry will take long time to actually represent this geometry on screen so instead of showing all these geometries on a screen with its full size and full definition what we can do is we represent them in the form of just single straight lines and that can be done by using the various generative view stylists and for that what you need to do is there is one setting that you need to have it on your computer that is you need to go in a tools if I go in the option then you need to go in a mechanical design if you go in a mechanical design there is a drafting option and in that you will find the last option administration and in administration you need to go in a generative view style option and you need to have prevent generative view style up uh, view style usage option unchecked like this okay now if I hit OK and now if I try to create a front view of that geometry if I click on the front view can you see that generative view style option has started to appear now we would like to show them in the line format so that's why what we need to do we would like to select structure GBS option and now if I go back in the same model if I select the same geometry as a front view and if I get similar representation just next to it but if I click on it can you see that instead of showing the lateral structure members as a complete geometry can you see that they are being represented by the conventional straight lines now by you making use of text template we can name them as per the requirement so if I go catalog if I click on that can you see that as soon as I bring the mouse cursor on them the system will recognize what shape it is we will able to create the templates as per the requirement okay so like that we will the system will allow us to actually create the different views of the geometry will allow us to create the different views again in this case the system will actually allow us to if I go in the insert option you will find the system will allow us to create the balloons for the different geometry or if the system will allow us to create the bill of material for these geometries as well so you don't need to create the separate bill of material this 
the inbuilt tools will allow us to actually gather all the data and paste it directly on your drafting workbench uh, or on a on a your 2D part file uh, to create the different views. I think we are coming to the end of uh, this session. The general idea was uh, the idea behind this particular webinar was to give you uh, about a basic. Uh, understanding about how the this particular tool works in the uh, for the structure design one more thing i wanted to show it to you specifically when you are going to deal with the structures you may be interested in the sending this data in the form of structures to the uh, uh, to the different other software where the structures is being designed suppose if you are working with any big OEM customer where whatever the structure that you will be developing you would like to have that to be communicated with the software which is uh, which is other than the Katia uh, and you would like to have your Katia model to be directly able to open it in that particular uh, in that particular software for that you will find there is a tool called STNF that is a neutral format file the system will allow us to create which will allow us to actually send this data to the third party solution or the third party solution uh, or any other structure design software to use that data directly and that will allow us to modify them as well so for that exporting what you need to do just select this STNF export option specify the location of the file if I said test, okay, we would like to have specify the name of a company, project name, test, webinar, okay, hit okay. Once I do that, the system will save that data in the form of Excel file. Now, what I'm going to do, if I just close this file, without saving it and if I would like to reproduce that particular file again what you need to do you can go in mechanical design if I go in a structure design option again and if I go in a mechanical design Structure design. Come on. Okay, yeah. And now, if I would like to import the same model again, what you need to do is DNF import. Click on that. Select the DNF file that you got it. And now, if I hit OK, can you see that the system will give me access to the same model that we have just exported? Okay, all both the files that you will find are going to be exactly identical. Only thing is it will not carry any link with the original model. This particular file, we will be able to open it not only in Katia, but any other structure design software. So that if you are working on OEM, you need to, don't need to have a same software just like your OEM for the structure design. You can con continue to use Katia and whatever the data that you have created can be directly exported or the imported uh, with the 3d uh, sorry third party software okay i think uh, we are coming to the end of the webinar now uh, the the idea behind this to actually give you the overview of the entire process we'll be having a one more webinar which will allow us to uh, go over the structure design uh, in context with the shipbuilding and the offshore business. Uh, my colleague Jema will be contacting you guys again uh, mm -hmm. regarding the dates and the timing for that particular webinar. Uh, if you have any question about this particular uh, structure design, uh, do post them on my email address uh, or you can contact us through the chat as well. I will be very happy to see your questions and I'll reply them through the emails. Uh, about before we finish, I'll just, you can contact us. You can see on the screen.
you can be in contact uh, you can remain in touch with us through the blogs that we dot on the www.intensive.com slash blog or you can request for the trainings through the intensive.com training section or we are on a Twitter we or we are on a YouTube and LinkedIn as well do contact us regarding any question that you have it we'll be very happy to help you or work with you for any uh, any problem that you have it for the using Katia or engineering work okay thank you very much for your patience guys and uh, hope to see you soon thanks